Hi, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Let's tilt that forward a little bit. That's better, I think, maybe. <laughs> okay, so in keeping with my um, series that I started on cricket, um, probably a week ago or so, uh, and showing you the changes at the Adelaide Oval over the years, which is South Adelaide's famous test match cricket ground and football ground. Um, I'm now going to go using a lot of my photos that I've taken over the years of various test matches and state games. I'm going to go through now a series on cricket. I'm going to talk about the rules, uh, batting, bowling. Um, what else can I talk about? Just the general strategy of how the, the game works. Um, Scoring, yeah, a whole lot more. <laughs> anyway, um, you can hear the Murray Magpie out there chirping in the background, maybe. He's joining in. Anyway, so I'm going to um, share with you today some photographs, and I'm going to try and use them to explain the rules. If you really want to know the rules of cricket, you probably should um, Google it <laughs> and find out, because they are quite complicated to the uninitiated, and um, there are different types of games that are played but they're all played with a, a, a cricket ball and a bat. I haven't got a bat in here. Um, I guess the best way to start is to say something like, um, if there's a lot of American people watching this, for instance, probably not because they're not too interested in cricket, but they do play cricket in America. It's, and in other parts of the world, it's, it's, in some ways there are some similarities with baseball. You have In baseball, you have a pitcher. In cricket, you have a bowler. The difference between a pitcher and a, and a bowler is that the pitcher is allowed to throw and bend his arm, whereas the bowler has to bring his arm straight over the top without bending the arm. And, uh, and the same way as you have different types of pitching, you know, curve balls and slow balls and fast balls and all that sort of stuff. Um, in cricket, in bowling, you can have fast bowlers and spin bowlers and what they call medium paces. Um, probably the main variations of, uh, of bowlers and some people um, and, and some people and of course everyone in the, in the team has to bat sometime and uh, so you can be a bowler who bats or a batsman who bowls and um, a person who does both reasonably well is called an all-rounder. Anyway let's get back to the rules. So I'll put some pictures up on here in a minute to, to explain them to you. And that's probably the best thing to do because then I can just talk to the pictures and that'll bring things to my mind as I go. So let's get in here. I'm using the Zoom thing to uh, uh, show you today. So we're just going to, uh, what's that say, share the screen. So now I'm gonna hop on there and I'm going to view into the full screen. So now I should be up in the top corner there and uh, you'll see some pictures that I've chosen to help illustrate the rules of the game. So there's a scoreboard, the famous Adelaide Oval scoreboard. You have two teams of 11 players in any cricket match, really. Well, there are some other forms of cricket, um, single wicket competitions, which is another thing again. But... Um, so you can see on this particular game between South Australian Redbacks and the touring English side, they were out here for an Ashes series, which they are in Australia at the moment, at the time. And you can see going down there, you've got uh, on the left-hand side under where it says bowlers under the Redbacks there, you can see it goes down one, two, three, four, eight, right down to nine, and then number 10 and number 11. They haven't got numbers alongside of them, but that's showing the 11 people in the team. Now, the last one they usually show down the bottom is the wicketkeeper. So Graham Manu, who's down the bottom there, he was the wicketkeeper. So in the same way in baseball, you have a catcher behind where the bats, batter is. Uh, in cricket, you have a, a wicketkeeper who's behind, standing behind the batsman. Okay. So, and then on the other side, you also, you have all the, the players listed who are the batting lineup. So that's in order of, of you have an opening batsman. So the first two people in that team would have been Strauss and Trot. They were the two that would come out to start the game. And then the better players go right down to number one, two, three, four, five. 
and then you get down to the players after Bell, for instance, they, so after prior, they start to be bowlers and some of them can bowl and bat. And uh, there you can see right down, well, I'm not sure who their wicketkeeper was at the time, but anyway, so that's, that's how that works. And on the left-hand side, you can see a first innings and a second innings and a first innings and a second innings. In what they call a four-day match, which is the state games, they can be played over four days, the test matches over five days. And the idea is if you want to win the game, it's a little bit similar to baseball, uh, both teams in a four or five-day game have got to bat twice and be dismissed twice before you can get a result. And the team whose collective scores are higher than the other team in that situation is the winner. If the game goes for the full uh, allotted time, which can be up to five days, and uh, no one conclusively wins it, the other team is not totally dismissed. They haven't got out. In other words, they haven't all been struck out like you would in baseball. They've got to be bowled out or, or caught out or whatever. Um, well, then it's a draw. If there's, if there's no result, even though the other one team might have made a lot more runs than the other, if, if you haven't got both teams out, you, you haven't won the game. So let's move on. Here we see a couple of batsmen representing England coming out to bat, open the batting, or maybe, maybe they are the opening batsmen, I'm not sure. Anyway, <clears throat> you can see some of the players in the other team, the South Australian Redbacks, just getting ready to take them on. And here you can see some of the fielders because you have fielding. And I'll explain a bit more about fielding as we go. You have fielders, they're all standing behind the wicketkeeper. The guy second from the left there um, with the gloves on, he's the wicketkeeper. He is the equivalent of your catcher in baseball. <clears throat> because at the start of a game, usually a fast bowler comes on because the ball's shiny and new. And it's a lot, e a lot more devastating to use a shiny new ball uh, when you start the game the wicketkeeper usually stands back a fair bit from behind the, the stumps, which is where the, um, the wicket is. And uh, so the batsman is just out of sight there. And there, the wicketkeeper has actually just taken a catch there. <clears throat> and he's about to throw it up in the air. You see the guy on the right with his hands in the air. He's getting all excited because the, the bowler came in and bowled to the batsman. And uh, he sneaked it with his bat on the way through and the wicketkeeper caught it. And that means that the batsman's out. I think that's similar in, in baseball. I'm not sure. Now, here we see <coughs> a batsman. Those guys you saw before were standing back behind that wicket. Those wickets there in just behind the batsman are called the stumps. There's three of them. And um, for you to get someone out as a bowler, in other words, dismiss them so that the next batter comes in or batsman comes in, the bowler has either got to hit that wicket with the ball, uh, even if it hits the batsman or his bat on the way through, as long as it hits the wicket, uh, that means he's dismissed the batsman. <coughs> or if that batsman goes a bit further forward, past that line there, which is the crease, and uh, the wicketkeeper might be standing up close, um, and he stumps the... Uh, he. Um, takes the bales off, there's bales on top of the wicket, little pegs that go across the top. If he breaks the stumps with the ball in his gloves and the batsman is over that front crease, well, then he's also uh, dismissed as what they call stumped. So he's stumped. He's, he's also dismissed then. So there's um, the batsman. I think it's Kevin Peterson, famous English batsman, doing a off drive there. That's what they call an off drive. It's an attacking shot. He's still doing another attacking shot from the other end. Because after each over, which consists of six balls these days, the bowler bowls six balls, and then they swap around to the other end, and the next bowler bowls six balls. There you go. With the straight arm, not the bent arm that I mentioned. And here's one of the fast bowlers. The, the batsman, who you saw before, had just hit a four. And the umpire there with the, the hat on is actually waving his hands from side to so side <coughs> to signal that he has hit a four. He's got four runs by hitting the ball to the boundary, clearly to the boundary. Even if someone touches it on the way through, that's four runs. 
to add to your tally. <coughs> we can see here with that little arrow alongside Edmondson, he's the guy that was currently bowling. I think that's Edmondson that's bowling there. And there's probably Kevin Peterson hitting another one there. And he's really gone for a big hit there. And uh, you can see the fieldsman's ready, but he's not going to catch that one. That's probably gone pretty high. And in fact, it's gone over the fence. And then the batsman scores six runs because it's cleared the boundary. Uh, even if it's touched on the way through, but it goes over the boundary. If someone tries to catch it right on the boundary, but they drop it and it goes over the boundary, that's still six runs. So that's how the umpire signals six runs. So you can get runs to add it to your score, not like in baseball where you run around the diamond and, and you only get one run to complete the whole circuit. In, um, in cricket, you can score one run at a time, two runs at a time, three runs at a time, four runs at a time by running them all, or you can get four runs by hitting the ball to the boundary or six by hitting it over the boundary. There you go. And there you can see the two batsmen are congratulating each other about to do a fist pump because he hit a six. <coughs> when they um, score runs, the, uh, there's the, the fast bowler coming in to bowl another one. Now, if you see that line there just where the batsman's bat is, if that bowler, his front foot goes over that line, totally over that line, when he bowls it, that's called a no ball. And the, the uh, batting team actually get a score, one run added to their score, and the batsman, the, the, sorry, the bowler has to bowl that ball again. So instead of six balls that he bowls in the over, he's now got to bowl seven because that one didn't count. Now we see a bit of a change. For the batsman to score a run, they've got to run up and down that uh, pitch. And... Uh, it's 22 yards long, the pitch. So the batsmen at both ends have to get there safely to the other end to score one run. So if that guy down the other end hits the ball and then they take off for a run, as long as they both get to their end without someone breaking the stumps down before they get there with the ball, well, then that's one run that they've scored. And if they go up and down two times, that's two runs. Three times, that's three runs. If they go up and down four times, that's four runs. Very rarely would you get someone to run five runs. So this is a slow bowler coming in now. He's a spin bowler, I think. And when you have a slow bowler in, particularly at the different stage of the game, the, um, the fieldsmen come in a bit closer because they're trying to get a catch. See that ball's popped up in the air a little bit there. And if it was to carry to the fieldsman and he catches it without it hitting the ground, well, then he has dismissed that bat, bat, batsman. And now here, here the batsman is playing what they call a sweep shot which you can do off of a slow bowler. It's a lot harder to do it off of a fast bowler. And he's pulling that round to the side there. Now see that one, that's up in the air a fair bit higher. And it looks like it could have been caught, but if he had a, hit the ball straight into the ground and it bounced up, well then it's not out. But if that fielder there was to catch that on the full, well then he would dismiss the batsman. There's a fast bowler coming from the other end. You can see the ball in the middle there. So we can keep her walking back, must have had a break, and you've got the two batsmen coming out again. And that's showing the score as it was at the time. And you can see the progress report. Peterson, who was batting before, you can see over on the right hand side that he's now out. He's been dismissed. And he was caught by number 10, which is Blizzard, I think. And the bowler was number two, which was Edmondston. He was the bowler who was bowling when he got out and he made 33 runs. You can see the tally of runs that they're making down there. And at this stage of the game, they had made, England had made 184 and they'd lost four wickets. So there you go. I'm just going to um, stop sharing now and get back to just me. That's a little bit of an overview. There's a whole lot more to the, to the game of cricket than just that lots of tactics involved. And um, as we go through the different aspects of the finer points of bowling and batting uh, and fielding, uh, I'll bring out some of the more nuances of the game. So now I've got to work out. So I hope you've enjoyed that. And uh, thanks for watching and subscribe if you wish and like if you like. I'm now going to try and just um, get out of this so I can put this up on YouTube for you. Thanks for watching.